Hey there, Commanders. We're going to have a little bit of fun tonight with a PvE-focused build on a very small, very underappreciated platform known as the Eagle. A lot of players end up skipping this in their progression through the game, going directly from a Sidewinder to a Viper or a Cobra. But the Eagle does have a lot to offer and shouldn't be skipped outright. I anticipate most people watching this will probably step down to the Eagle from an established position in one of the larger medium ships, which is basically how I use it now. Whenever I want to have fun in something that's twitchy and an absolute romp to fly, this is what I fly. It's not particularly effective in terms of DPS, nor is it particularly useful in open play. It's just fun to fly, and I've enjoyed flying it every time I've taken it out. Core internals are as follows. Reactive surface composite, lightweight grade 5 and deep plating. 2A power plant, armored grade 5 and monstered. 3A, Enhanced Performance Thrusters. This is where things get interesting. Dirty Grade 5 and Drive Distributors. It's important that these two blueprints be paired together anytime you use Enhanced Thrusters because of the way the thruster curves work. You'll actually get higher performance values out of using the Drive Distributors Experimental on this platform specifically. If you use normal thrusters, you'll always want to use drag drives as that will get you better performance metrics. 3D, Frame Shift Drive shielded grade 5 and stripped down. This is because of the way that enhanced performance thrusters work. They're extremely sensitive to any increases in mass. So anytime you use enhanced performance thrusters, if you're trying to get maximum speed, you'll want to shave as much weight as you possibly can. In support of that objective, 1D life support, lightweight grade 5. You don't actually need to engineer the life support if you don't want to. If you have the materials, I recommend it, but it only makes about a 3 meter per second difference on boost speed so it's not essential. 2A, Power Distributor. Charge Enhanced Grade 5 and Super Conduits, for the same reason that I recommend this combination on any other combat ship in the game. Clearing as much headroom for your high-power weapons as you can is never a bad idea. If you opt to run strictly low-powered weapons, you could theoretically get away with shielding the Power Distributor for greater combat resiliency, but that's a very niche situation, and in most cases, I don't recommend it. 2D, Sensors. Lightweight grade 5. For the same reasons as the life support, we want to clear the board as much as possible for those enhanced performance thrusters. 1C fuel tank. This will reduce the ship's travel practicality to basically zero. So if you opt to shrink the fuel tank, note that you're going to gain 10 meters per second of top end boost power, but you will lose the ability to jump between systems very well. So I recommend this build for players who have fleet carriers or a strongly established home station you might be able to get one good jump out of it before you run out of gas. So be careful with fuel management anytime you have to leave the system and make sure that there are facilities where you're landing that can refuel you or you'll be calling the fuel routes. Optional internals. 3D hull reinforcement package, lightweight grade five and deep plating. Here, you can make a trade-off based on your play style. You can heavy duty grade five this particular module to gain greater combat resiliency at the cost of top end boost. 2C, biweave shield generator, thermal resistant grade five and low draw. Biweaves are ideal on small ships where you can maintain engagement control. And at 600 meters per second, you're basically assured engagement control against anything bigger than you are. That means that anytime you get in trouble, you can boost away, charge your shields and come back in for another run. And it doesn't take that long either. Recovery recharge time combined is about 45 seconds, so in less than a minute, you're all the way back up to full power and ready to rock. Though note that your shields at 57 megajoules are made of tissue paper and at best offer you a few seconds protection against glancing blows or surprise attacks. Make sure you're mobile as soon as you see those shields flare. 2D, module reinforcement package. Small ships are pretty vulnerable to losing their modules because of the lack of module integrity that they have across the board. So a module reinforcement package is always a good idea, especially on hull focused small ships like this Eagle is set up to be. The next three hull reinforcement packages are all 1D, heavy duty grade five and deep plating. I don't normally recommend using heavy duty grade five on size one hull reinforcements, but here we don't have a choice. We wanna get that absolute integrity up as high as we can and that's the best way to do it. If, however, you really want to get that boost up, you can lightweight and deep plate these things for less survivability in combat, but more speed and agility. The final hull reinforcement package is thermal resistant and reflective to balance hull resistances. 
hard points. The hard point you'll want in the top dead center slot is a Cyto Scrambler, if you have one available. Otherwise, dealer's choice. This will be your high draw weapon. Whatever you stick in that top dead center, you're going to want to make sure is your primary shield breaker or your weapon that demands the most precision overall. So you could put a railgun in here too. I would be careful about the power draw though, as we're already running up near the limit. Railguns draw a lot of energy, as do plasma accelerators, and as power constrained as this build is, I'm not sure it would be able to support more than one of either type of weapon. The remaining two hard points... Oh, hang on. The Cyto Scrambler is engineered rapid fire, grade 5, and phasing sequence, but there's a lot of flex flexibility you can select with the blueprint. I like rapid fire, grade 5 for this weapon because I already know I'm going to be closing uh, to very small distances in order to engage. So the Cyto Scrambler's jitter doesn't really bother me here. If you wanted to engage at a greater distance, you could opt for Overcharged or Focused or any number of other blueprints available to the Cyto Scrambler. I just, uh, it's a playstyle thing for me here because we're using Phasing Sequence. Now Phasing Sequence is the interesting little bit here. A lot of people don't know that the Cyto Scrambler has the capacity to deal more bleed through damage in the game because of the way that it attacks shields. Phasing Sequence works by taking the total shield damage per shot, deducting 9%, and applying that to a target ship's hull as absolute damage, which is the same category of damage that the Plasma Accelerator does. So it ignores resistances entirely. The Cyto Scrambler has a perk that basically lets it do about 250% bonus damage thermal bonus damage against shields. So do the math on that, since phasing sequence takes the final damage number that is applied to shields and then applies a percentage of that to the hull, you end up with a weapon that does an incredible amount of hull damage for what it is, without even dropping the shields. Now, I say incredible as a relative characteristic. Don't expect this thing to shred a hull tank but do expect it to chip a couple of percentage points off that hull over the course of a fight, where a normal phasing sequence weapon might get you one or two, this will get you four or five. Against weaker hold ships, the effects are even more dramatic. The 1F enforcer cannons here are set up rapid fire grade five and auto loader, and then rapid fire grade five and corrosive. This is a personal taste issue on my part. You can also select whatever blueprint you want here and have it work pretty well. I have heard of commanders electing for short-range blueprints with autoloader in order to increase damage against larger targets, but the reason why rapid fire is on here for my purposes is that I find myself engaging other small ships with these enforcer cannons, and because they're fixed mount and kinetic, it's very difficult to track targets, and the slow fire rate of the enforcer means that if you aren't absolutely on point, a bunch of your shots are going to miss. And in a slow firing weapon, that can really add up to a lot of opportunity to uh, not do anything to the target. Rapid fire reduces the amount of precision that you have to have in order to hit the target. And it also gives you more opportunities to apply experimental effects that you might need. You'll see down here, we have rapid, rapid fire and corrosive shells so that we can up the maximum damage that the enforcer can deal, since it only has a penetrating value of, let's see, where is it at? 30. So it's really important to have something that applies corrosive damage on this ship. It almost doesn't matter what it is. This weapon combination is just meant to be kind of an example of the fun you can have with the Eagles, since all three of these weapons are generally ineffective placed on any medium or large ship. So the Eagle is actually one of the few platforms that can really apply these well. The final utility mount is dealer's choice. I've opted for chaff launcher because I typically use this for PVE engagements. Ammo capacity grade one, it's the only thing you can really get, uh, to increase the amount of synthesis efficiency you have if you need to synth ammo. And you should expect to synth ammo if you use rapid fire on a multi-cannon. If you're not into that, the next best blueprint that I recommend is either high capacity to increase your combat endurance or short range to increase your damage. Remember that kinetics have target lead times and anything beyond like one or two kilometers, it's really hard to hit targets, especially if they're in the small ship category. So you're gonna be firing on most things you engage at about a kilometer or less. And that means that short range actually does better than overcharged in these situations allowing you to apply 75% more damage to a target per shot. This becomes uh, particularly poignant if you decide to use premium synthesis, although I don't know very many people who do. 
The uh, total cost of the build actually is not too bad. The enhanced performance thrusters are the single most expensive thing on the whole ship, which is unique because typically it's reactive surface composite that breaks the bank here. Uh, 5.7 mil for the whole build, 287,000 credit rebuy, so it's cheap. I actually am not afraid to fly this in open play because I typically don't care if I die when I'm in it. It's no skin off my back, and you get to have a lot of fun while you're doing it. You boost about 50 meters per second faster than a typical Ferdy Lance kitted for PvP, which gives you an opportunity to mess with gankers. They'll pull you thinking that you might be an easy mark, and then you dance circles around them for 5 or 10 minutes until they get a lucky shot in and basically wipe you out on the first direct hit. Um, you do have to remember that if they're using Super Pen Railguns and they manage to connect with your hull without any shielding, you're probably going to lose an internal somewhere in here. It's kind of a roll of the dice. Those weapons do a phenomenal amount of module damage, and you'll start malfunctioning after the first hit, which is why, again, shielded grade 5 and stripped down on the frameshift drive. It gives you an opportunity to run away in the event he scores a lucky shot and breaks something kind of uh, important. Um, armoring the power plant for the same reason. That way, you know, if you start to see malfunctions in critical systems, you have a chance to make plans and escape. Let's see. I think that's all I've got for today, so I will catch you guys later.